what is up wing nuts in today's episode of who let this kid ride a dirt bike we're going to be taking a look back at what i would call a trip from hell but first for you to fully understand i have to give you a little bit of backstory okay so the people i made this trip with i'm not going to mention any names but this is their rig that i just pulled up to now they're great people but if they were a logistics company they'd fall somewhere between fedex and the united states postal service i put a nice little reference on your screen so you'll know what i'm talking about with that being said we had about a four hour trip ahead of us so of course we gave ourselves about two and a half hours to get there so we're on our way to the track in this frantic scramble calling them to see if they're even going to let us sign up well a couple hours into the drive we realized we don't even have gas for the bikes so we're gonna have to make a stop about three hours into the trip we make a stop uh, my buddy gets out of the van and he's like hey uh is your bike running and i'm in there trying to take a nap so i'm like haha real funny you know and he's like no i'm serious i think that's your bike running so i pop up and i walk back there and sure enough my bike is running so then my next immediate thought was that one of them hopped out and started my bike up as a joke but the more that i started looking into it i began to realize it wasn't a joke at all i had just done an oil change and i looked at the hour meter the bike had been running for three fucking hours i'm gonna use my high level editing skills here to show you where my bike was positioned on the trailer and how it makes no fucking sense my bike was facing forward on the right side with the bars overhanging the edge of the trailer my start button is also on the right side and there's no way a strap or anything could have come into contact with it so to this day other than a possible short in the wiring we have no idea how that could have happened i'm just going to chalk it up to my theory that the bike was possessed and i think that the rest of this video will help to prove that so anyways we got our gas made the rest of our trip pulled up to the track like a nascar pit stop hopped out we were signing up as practice was ending so threw all of our gear on got to the line and it was time to race so here we are on the line at Lincoln Trail in Casey, Illinois. I said I wasn't going to mention any names, but that's my buddy Colin next to me. I've never ridden here, didn't exactly get to get any practice in, but it's run what you brung, no excuses, let's see what happens. Alright, so I didn't get a very good jump, but I had a pretty good gait, which leads to a mid-pack start. At this point, though, I'm really just trying to figure out where the hell I'm even going. So, a whopping 30 seconds in, things are already starting to get sketchy. I'm going to back it up for you just in case you missed it. So as I'm coming over this jump, the guy on the left is going to cross jump underneath me, which that's standard C-class shenanigans. But when I'm in the air, I'm getting a little bit obtuse. That's another way of saying I'm throwing a sick, nasty whip. Now, I should probably trademark that. I like that, obtuse. Anyways, I don't know how to bring that back, so we almost have ourselves a little crash. But we survived, so we're just going to carry on feeling out this track on this first lap. So we're going through this big bowl turn and out of nowhere somebody just jumps in off the side of the track like hey put me in coach i don't even think he looked back could have ended both of our days real quick so as we come around and cross the finish line to complete our first lap i see this kid in front of me slipping and sliding around and i'm like oh yeah baby it's opening that door for me to make a pass as soon as i try to i grab a handful of throttle and i do the same damn thing Lesson being, it's hard to pass a squid when you are a squid. This guy comes in and makes a pass on me. 
then, just a handful of seconds later, I come back and make a pass on him. Straight up battle for the ages out here in C-Class. So we are now on our last lap for this moto. I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with the track, maybe even getting a little bit rowdy, looking for places that I might potentially be able to make a pass on this guy in front of me. Alright, I'm going to run this back and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but it looks like this guy is definitely set up to go outside. So from my point of view, I'm like, alright, I'm going to go inside, I'm about to make me a little pass, right? Wrong. Dude hits me with a little swervy dervy and what follows is a sound of twisted metal and spokes that sends shivers up my spine. After our little tip over, we pick the bike up and see if we can't salvage a couple spots. Coming up over this jump, we get past the 885. Coming around this next corner, and the 22 says, Watch this, I can get obtuse with the best of them. Yeet! But then a few seconds later, I'm like, Alright, Scrub Daddy, that was impressive, but I gotta go. That brings us to our white flag where we jump forward to being behind the C-Class Kawasaki version of Danger Boy Deegan. We give him the old slip up the inside and we also get around White Lightning who if you watched the last video you'll remember. Another kid up here is stalled out and we go around him which I think puts us back to our original position before the crash to wrap up this moto. I am back on the line for moto 1 of class number 2 on the day. We're back by our buddy Colin and for some reason I am 9 miles away from the gate. So my jump was terrible as you would imagine from where I lined up, but we get a little bit crafty here and somehow squeak out like a 5th place start. At this point feeling pretty good, you know, we got our first moto in, didn't go horrible, got to feel out the track, at least half assed know where I'm going. So I'm like alright, you know, we can push it a little bit more, try to, try to up those results. But right when you get to thinking like that, you can get humbled real quick. Okay, this shit was so embarrassing. Like, have you ever gone down a one way, the wrong direction, and like seen somebody? Well, that's what this was like. I'm just looking at everybody as they go by, like, sup, 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 what's up? What's up? How you doing? What's up? 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 What's up?
So I took a pretty hard hit there. Uh, I'm in distress, trying to pick my bike up and not get ran over at the same time. My GoPro is hanging off my face upside down. We'll get that flipped around, but uh, I ended up, my bars and everything were all twisted up. I got back on the track and I was gonna try to ride it out, but I ended up pulling off for this moto. So as I'm pulling back into the pits, um, I'm not exactly happy and I have myself a little bit of an encounter here. At the time, I'm like, fuck this kid got some kind of staring problem, trying to get buck, think because I'm 25 I won't beat up a 12 year old, shit. In hindsight, I realized I was pretty busted up, you know, I had a bark buster hanging, my bars were all twisted up, my visor was probably pointed towards the sky. So yeah, I mean, I'd probably stare too if I was him, but in that moment, I was ready to run his little ass over. Anyways, we got all that shit straightened out, we're back on the line, and we are in full motocross mode. No bark busters on the bike anymore. We got a pretty good jump this time and made a couple early moves to put us right in around 5th place again. But if you remember, history does not serve me well in 5th place so far today. Well, if you didn't pick up on it that something was going to happen, here it is. I get too excited when I'm out front, you know, I just I choke, I'm like, I'm going to win this race, but no. So I dab my foot, I pop out of this rut, and then I wash the front end. I go down, about 9 million people go by. I'm about to have to start up a group or something called Rut Poppers Unanimous for people like me that just can't seem to figure it out. We're going to make some cuts forward for time's sake, but here comes example 3 of why I think this bike was possessed. I'm sure you heard me yell there, and that's because as I went to pass White Lightning, my bike turned my leg into a snack. Now, I didn't even know my leg could bend like this. I dabbed, it got sucked up into the rear tire, and it's got me all pretzeled up like what you see on your screen. Just a couple seconds later, Elijah is kind enough to give us a perfect third person view of how that could happen. We're going to continue the trend of jumping forward to save time, and that's going to put us behind my buddy Colin, who gets a little crossed up on this jump, but he does the right thing in anticipation. He gets off to the side, counteracts what that bike is going to do when it lands, and he saves it. We end up making the pass on Colin here, and just as a little cherry on top, we don't tuck the front end and catapult ourselves off the bike this time around. This guy comes in, takes a little better line, and he gets around. We come through and pick up our white flag, which signifies our last lap for the day. Looks like Elijah's having some trouble, so we pick up another spot as we go by him. I try to make a move here, but my rut popping ass just couldn't fit up that inside rut good enough to get by. We come around to get our checkered flag. I'm not sure where I placed in any of these motos, um, overalls, any of that stuff. Uh, I remember I wasn't exactly happy with it. Uh, one of the first times that I felt like I belonged kind of in that top five range, um, if I could just cut down on some of the mistakes, but so it goes. That's just part of racing. Those are things I know that I've got to clean up in the future. As always though guys, uh, if you like the video, the best thing that you can do for me is to give it a share. My last one didn't exactly go viral, we're trying to pump these numbers up, we're pushing rookie numbers right now, so help me out.
another cool thing is I'm going to start featuring some of my favorite comments at the end of these videos. So if you want your comment featured, drop one below. Peace.